from Loretto Abbey, home to the Sisters of Loretto since 1928, and the Loretto Abbey Secondary School. And with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. To prepare ourselves once again to celebrate the Eucharist, to truly be nourished by the gift of God's Word and His Sacrament, we again pause and place ourselves in God's presence, conscious of our need of God's grace and His mercy. And with faith and in confidence, we pray, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred, according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption and the glory, the covenants, and the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all, God be blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. The
My friends, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. On one occasion, when Jesus was going to the house of a leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. Just then, in front of him, there was a man who had dropsy. And Jesus asked the lawyers and the Pharisees, is it lawful to cure people on the Sabbath or not? But they were silent. So Jesus took him and healed him and sent him on his way. Then Jesus said to them, if one of you had a child or an ox that had fallen into a well, would you not immediately pull it out on the Sabbath day? And they could not reply to this. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, it seems quite a while for me since I've been here, so I'm delighted to be back among you. You know, in today's Gospel, Jesus is dealing with people who I would say are scrupulous in their understanding and application of the law in their own personal lives. For them, the law is among the holy of holiest testimonies in their lives. For them, he first, uh, rather, uh, for them, he first and uh, un- it, it is their first and unquestioned priority in their lives. That is the law of Moses. Everything ascends to it, and everything flows from it for the faithful Jew. All else is secondary, and nothing can equal it. By the time of the public ministry of Jesus, the Mosaic Law, now hundreds of years old, had become multiplied over and over again especially as it applied to the Sabbath. Taking an afternoon stroll on the Sabbath is really not an acceptable practice. A person was not permitted to use a cane on the Sabbath. The food that Jesus would have eaten at the house of the Pharisees would have been prepared the day before because it was forbidden to cook on the Sabbath. What we should not conclude from all of this is that Jesus had no regard for the Mosaic Law. Indeed, in its proper understanding and application, he had the highest regard for the law. Recall that he said, I have come not to abolish the law, nor to change even a jot or a tittle, but to bring it to its fulfillment. In order to broaden the way and means by which the law is to be lived and respected, Jesus creates this teachable moment for us in today's gospel by healing the man who had dropsy on the Sabbath. We cannot be sure why the Pharisees, whom the text says were watching him closely, why they fell silent on witnessing Jesus' healing action. I mean, were they simply left speechless because of the great scandal this would have been for them? Might they be thinking that such a breach of the law is sufficient enough evidence to have him finally convicted. Whatever, whatever the case may be, it's clear that for Jesus, the law is at its best when it creates a genuine spirit of hope and freedom. And so, as it was for Jesus, so now, especially for us, The law that guides our lives and helps shape and form our decisions should be expressions of true and genuine freedom. Laws should never be instruments that burden and bind 
in a way that makes us held captive. Remember when Jesus clearly admonished the scribes for laying heavy burdens on new converts and not abiding by such laws and practices themselves. Woe to you, he said, woe to you who do such things. We know and believe that laws are an important and an essential part of life. They bring order out of what otherwise may be chaos. Sigmund Freud, the father of psychoanalysis, once said that in the absence of law, the world could be likened to a nursery of discontent. I'm sure there have been instances in your life when you had to negotiate with yourself whether to hold firm and fast to the law while at the same time feeling called to go beyond the law to accomplish what would appear to be a better good. You've been there, I'm sure. I do believe that when we find ourselves being pulled in both directions, it's then that we should call upon the power of prayer to lead us in what we feel deepest in our soul to be the right decision to make. Sometimes acts of mercy and works of charity might seem to take precedence over the implementation of a specific law at a particular time. Much like Paul, today, hopefully our prayer would lead us to say, quote, my conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I believe it's fair to say that sometimes others may confide in you or in me in their wanting to make a decision which for them seems not to embrace the law as they understand it. In such cases, we can be an important instrument of discernment in unbinding the individual from the decision which needs to be made. In such instances, we must not undermine the law, but also be aware that fulfilling the law should not be about feeling burdened and bound. Instead, by loving the law as Jesus taught us, we should bring about that experience of freedom and liberation so evident in Jesus' own application of the law, which he loved so deeply. And if you look at our own Holy Father Francis, isn't it often the case that he seems to reach for mercy, mercy as the legitimate means by which actions and behaviors can be taken? And so as we hear the gospel today, as we experience our own life, let us pray that the law may never be something that imprisons and retains us to such a degree that we feel crippled or paralyzed or not able to act but rather to feel the law as a gift, as a way to freedom, as a way to liberation, for God's grace, for God's blessing, for the sure and certain hope that God's law may be for each of us a sign and symbol of freedom. For this we give the Lord thanks and we give him praise. Let us now give thanks and praise to God for good leadership in our church, especially that of Pope Francis, that going forth from the World Synod of Bishops on the family, those most in need will experience the joy and freedom of living the gospel, we pray to the Lord. Today, let us remember the plight of the many refugees who have been forced to leave behind all their material possessions, sometimes family members and friends, in search of new settlement, that, they, that the hearts and homes of others will be open to the hospitality in which they are in need of, we pray to the Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the gift of marriage and family life, that the power of love, peace, and joy may permeate the hearts and homes of all those who call upon the name of the Lord, we pray to the Lord. Amen. We recall today the sick and the suffering, the hospitalized, the homebound, the unemployed, the terminally ill, 
those who are in prison and those who stand in judgment of civil courts, that justice would be tempered by mercy. For this we pray to the Lord. We recall and place before the Lord today the special and particular needs held in the hearts of all our viewing audience, especially those who make this televised Mass possible, that the Lord will pour out upon them the generosity of his grace in double portions, we pray to the Lord. Lord and for all who have died and gone before us, that the Lord may grant them the gift of his, their place in the kingdom and that from there they may intercede for us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord our God, you know our hearts and you probe our thoughts. Hear now and answer the prayers we present to you those spoken aloud and those that remain in the secret of our hearts. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be the Lord forever. this woman, I want to come to share in divinity of Christ, to open myself to share in every humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me of my sin. My friends, pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray the offering which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in goodness you created man, and when he was justly condemned in mercy, you redeemed him through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. 
Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. At the Savior's command, and excuse me, let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, deliver us, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always freed from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may this peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
let us share now with one another a sign of peace. My friends, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. In the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, bring to life and give us your spirit. 